Today's New Testament reading is from Romans, the third chapter. Then what advantage has the Jew? Or what is the value of circumcision? Much in every way. To begin with, the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. What if some were unfaithful? Does their faithlessness nullify the faithfulness of God? By no means. Let God be true, though everyone were a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and prevail when you are judged. But if our unrighteousness serves to show the righteousness of God, what shall we say? That God is unrighteous to inflict wrath on us? I speak in a human way. By no means. For then how could God judge the world? But if through my lie God's truth abounds to His glory, why am I still being condemned as a sinner? And why not do evil that good may come, as some people slanderously charge us with saying? Their condemnation is just. What then? Are we Jews any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under sin, as it is written, None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. In their paths are ruin and misery, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Bron Campbell. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hypocrites are the worst, right? We know them when we see them, or really, when we hear them. People who talk the talk but don't walk the walk. People who don't practice what they preach. The hypocrite says one thing but does another. They hold up a standard for living as exemplary. However, they themselves fail to live up to it. And while that might be disappointing from the perspective of someone seeing them from the outside, what's most vexing about a hypocrite is when they commend to you the very same standard against which they fall short. You've probably known someone that you thought was acting as a hypocrite. Could have been a parent, a teacher, a politician, a preacher. They say what someone should do in a situation, what needs to be done, yet they don't do it or do the very opposite. You see it, you hear it, but do they? It's as if the only person the hypocrite fools is himself. Have you failed to practice what you preach? In today's reading from Romans 3, St. Paul calls us to consider the connection between knowing how we should live and falling short of it and where that puts us before God. Paul makes the case that people who have grown up with the knowledge of God's instruction and covenant faithfulness have that as an advantage over those who didn't. However, it's of no advantage if they don't live according to that instruction. How can they hold up their faith to nations if they themselves are faithless? They'd rightly be seen as hypocrites. But Paul doesn't stop there. He argues that God is faithful, a truth that he will elaborate greatly on as this letter to Christians in Rome continues. It's God's faithfulness that makes the difference for his people, and that includes you and me. God is faithful, faithful to you and faithful for you. In Jesus, the only person who was never a hypocrite, instead of justly inflicting wrath upon us, God shows his true righteousness by sending us our Savior. Because Jesus embodies God's high, perfect standard for living, doing everything that needed to be done to fulfill God's instruction. Jesus' faithful life and his faithful death are how God offers hope to us imperfect, unrighteous people, Jew and Gentile alike. The faith that God's people have by grace leads to faithfulness in living. Faith and faithfulness are two parts of of a Christian's identity. They're never meant to be separated. So in this season of epiphany, then, 
as that light of Christ is revealed to the world. Consider how your faith is moving you to faithfulness in living. Rather than being a hypocrite in your relationship with your neighbor, your family, your coworker, your friend, you have the opportunity as a Christian to speak real hope to people living in a disillusioned and dying world. Acknowledge both God's perfect plan for life and your own falling short. Then point to Jesus as the one who didn't. For them, for you, and for me. God is faithful. And that is our reason for hope. Amen.